it is the top of the hour, so I think we'll get going. I see that there are still people uh, joining in, but we've got lots to cover today, so I will we'll get started. Uh, bonjour à toutes et tous. I'd like to thank you all for joining us today to discuss implementing the CURL Copyright Open Education resource for university instructors and staff on campus. My name is Catherine McColgan. I'm the Manager of Administration and Programs at CARL, and I would like to acknowledge that I live and currently work in Gatineau, Quebec, which is part of the unceded and unsurrendered territory of the Anishinaabe Algonquin Nation, whose presence here reaches back to times beyond memory. I'd like to recognize the Algonquins as the customary keepers and defenders of the Ottawa River watershed and its tributaries, and to honor their long history of welcoming many nations to this territory. La discussion déroulera en anglais, mais nous avons des diapositives en français qui sont disponibles sur notre site web. Le, li le lien sera affiché dans le chat. This session will be recorded and will be made available on the CARL website. We would ask that you please use the Q&A function to ask any questions uh, to the panelists. And now I'd like to introduce our panelists to get things started. Uh, Stephanie Orfano is Head Scholarly Communications and Copyright Office at the University of Toronto. Qu Christina Winter is Copyright and Scholarly Communications Librarian at the University of Regina. Mark Schwartz is Copyright Manager at Queen's University and also Visiting Program Officer at CARL. And Rowena Johnson is Copyright Officer at the University of Calgary. And now over to you, Stephanie. Hi, everyone. Um, so before I begin providing the general introduction to the CARL Copyright OER, I just want to say on behalf of the entire team that worked on these modules, how great it feels to finally be in a place where we are presenting the completed resources to our colleagues and that we are now in a spot where we can learn from each other on how to maximize the use of these modules. So everything that's going to be covered in today's introduction is featured in the CARL implementation guide for this OER. And that resource is posted on the CARL website in case you want to return to this information in the future. Oops, already got ahead of myself here. So to give everyone a bit of context, the scripted material and quizzes have been adapted from the Copyright Literacy for Ontario College Employees course, which was created in 2014. With the full support of CARL, there are a few reasons why this working group decided to update these resources for a university context. The major one being that the copyright landscape has really evolved um since these scripts were originally developed and as a community we have really learned a lot so for the colleges this process probably would have started in 2013 so this would have been very new terrain in some cases um, we also wanted to address what we saw as a very clear need at universities um, and keep in mind that all of this work started prior to the pandemic uh, but i think many institutions were struggling with in-person copyright education. And our static web materials that we continue to rely on have limited reach. So now that copyright education is even more critical working in an online environment, these modules will allow us to disseminate copyright awareness during a time of much change for universities in Canada. Um, from an efficiency perspective, this project enables many institutions to work together, drawing upon each other's expertise to create a single resource that we can all use and then adapt. So in partnership with the University of Waterloo, who created these videos, they feature graphics by Julia Forsyth um, and narration provided by a professional voice actor. And so we now have a bilingual solution for on-demand copyright education. So ensuring legal accuracy was of course paramount during this process. Uh, the original scripts that were developed by Ontario College colleagues um, were those that were managing or aligned with copyright portfolios at the time. And the content was also vetted by uh, legal counsel at the time of creation as well. 
So our team had represent, representation from many universities in Canada with varying policies and approaches to copyright compliance. So we were able to pull from um, the big pool of expertise and their institutional resources. In addition to this, the adapted scripts were reviewed by Michael Jaworski, who is the partner and co-chair of the Higher Learning Practice Group at Clark Wilson LLP. Um, I think as a group, we all recognize that this content is going to have to be revisited. The group has set aside reserve funds to modify the course as needed. Um, and our working group has been meeting bi-weekly for almost give or take two-ish years, maybe even more than that. I can't even remember at this point. Um, so as we start to wrap up that work, our priority is going to be discussing um, what next steps look like in terms of when and how we update content. Another critical component to this work is accessibility. These modules are AODA compliant, and this work was guided by Waterloo's accessibility standards. Um, so for those who are not familiar with the modules at this point, there are seven, and they cover a variety of introductory topics ranging from um, discussing copyright practices and what they are based on um, to an introduction to licensing. So the great thing about these modules is that they offer a lot of flexibility in terms of implementation. So if you're just interested in linking to content, you're going to find these modules prepackaged on the CARL website ready to use. And if you're interested in remixing the content to meet your needs, all of the components, including the graphics, uh, quizzes, all the good stuff is available for download and is hosted by the University of Calgary. So as I mentioned previously, you might just want to link to content um, and uh, that's totally fine. Um, what I'm gonna dive into a little bit more now is um, implementation in a bit more depth. So you're gonna hear from four institutions today um, on how they're planning or hoping to use the modules. Uh, but I wanted to quickly highlight a few other institutions and um, how they may be sharing the work. Okay, um, so you can link directly. Um, the University of Waterloo has decided to take this approach. In um, some of these slides, you're gonna see that there is a contact listed. Um, so if you wanna speak to a representative at that institution to learn more about their approach, um, Catherine Blair is a great person to speak to here. Um, and um, the link to the CARL modules um, is linked to, I believe, in their copyright resources. You may also want to consider integrating these modules into your teaching. So maybe by selecting a few to highlight or structuring a session on the modules, um, all seven modules. So uh, the University of Alberta is a great, great resource to speak to about this particular approach. But you may also want to consider creating a standalone course. And these are the experiences that you're going to hear more about today. So since these modules are meant for such a broad audience, you may also want to consider promoting these res resources uh, to relevant departments or divisions within your institution. And um, we've just listed on this slide um, a few departments or divisions that you may want to consider. So perhaps you have um, a really great relationship or would like to create a relationship with your teaching and learning centers and see how you can integrate these modules into some of their um, training or onboarding packages, things like that. So um, meant for very broad use. So the OER has a CC by NC license applied. Um, there are a few considerations noted in the attribution statement. So um, the maybe more notable one is that we did get permission from Ontario colleges to apply uh, a different license than what was originally um, applied to the work. And all of the graphics are made available under a CC zero license. So if you do have any questions, 
please get in touch with Carl. Um, however, if you do require tech support, your institution is probably better suited for those types of questions. Okay, so now we'll get to, I think the bread and butter of the, of the webinar here, um, which is the panel portion. So each panelist is going to be addressing the four questions that you see on your screen in their um, brief period of time that they get to share their implementation plans with you. So um, within that portion of time, we're going to hear about how each institution is implementing uh, the OER at, at their um, institution, how their plans fit with their institutional practices, if they are considering any incentives for course completion and whether the course will be mandatory. And finally, you're going to hear about their plans for promotion. So our first panelist is Christina Winter from the University of Regina, and then you'll hear from Queens, Calgary, and then finally back to me at U of T. So Christina, I will pass it over to you. Thanks, Stephanie. Um, yeah, so we just recently launched um, our uh, copyright course and we decided um, even I think quite early on in this process that we wanted to have a standalone copyright course to take to take the modules and implement them and um, into Moodle. So that's what we use at the University of Regina as our learning management system. Uh, the course, the, sorry, the course is open to all members of the University of Regina community, um, and it's currently not mandatory. It's just volunteer if you want to take the course. And when we were thinking about how to set this up, there was an existing information security course um, that is available at the University of Regina. So this kind of gave me an idea when we were thinking about the copyright course that I want it to be, you know, kind of a similar feel. Um, and one of the things we really wanted to do, and I think a few other panelists are going to be talking about this, is we wanted um, users to be able to self-register. Um, if we need to be a more formal registration system, that would have actually taken a lot more work. So we chose the self-enrollment option. So you just need a, you know, your U of R authentication, and then you can just register for the course. So that actually takes a lot of burden off us from having to enroll people or unenroll people in the course. Um, and yeah, we didn't need to integrate it with any other enrollment systems, so that was nice. In terms of customization for the course, we really haven't done too much. We just really implemented the CARL modules as is. Um, we have quite a bit of copyright information already in our learning management system. We have a copyright information um, box in Moodle. It's a permanent box. It doesn't move. And then we also have a terms of use with further copyright information that's associated with the course. We do have links to our copyright policy and fair dealing guidelines as well. But in terms of customization, we haven't done too much yet. Um, but that, you know, could be changed in the future as we get more familiar with the modules. Next slide, please. So the next thing uh, we have, these are just some kind of screenshots as to how we've set up the course and how it looks. So um, the really the goal of you know, having this copyright course uh, was to increase access to copyright information literacy and access to copyright educational opportunities across campus. Uh, the University of Regina is located in Regina, but we also have locations in Saskatoon and we have three federated colleges um, who um, have campuses as well in Saskatoon and Prince Albert. So this actually increases a lot of opportunity for people to get uh, copyright training. Uh, the course is, you know, it's set up in terms of the modules, module one through seven, but they can be, you know, completed in any order people want. So if they just want to look at one module, that's fine as well. So that's kind of a nice process. Um, but that creates some kind of other challenges. And we haven't set the course to be, you know, terms of course completion. You know, we're not tracking that because it, it's not set up to that. It's, it's not set up where you have to complete module one to move on to module two. So we're not tracking completion in that way. Um, we're not monitoring quiz results, anything like that. This is really used for an educational purpose. The one thing where we may look at is just how many people have actually you know, enrolled in the course We want to get a feel for that because I think that will be able to better inform us you know, with further promotion efforts down the line. Next slide, please. Um, in terms of promotion, um, 
I've worked closely and this again an ongoing process with our library external communications and promotions team um, and try to look at various methods and ways we can promote the course on campus. So as I mentioned, we just launched this on Monday to the university communities. We you know, use some social media to promote it. Um, I, we also have two copyright communities uh, copyright community, or sorry, excuse me, copyright committees at the University of Regina. I've shared them with them as well, and they have representation from all of our faculties and different departments on campus, so they can send them out. Um, I've also promoted it um, through, we have a remote delivery and faculty learning site. So they have an announcement page, so I shared it on that. Um, and also in the lead up to the launch um, of the copyright modules, um, I've been including the images and also been promoting this course to campus. So, you know, the illustrations I think are actually really fun um, and great to include in other copyright sessions. So every time I'm doing a presentation, I'd say, stay tuned, we're gonna have a, you know, a copyright course soon to be launched. Um, and then future plans I have is I plan to meet with different departments, units on campus um, to see if there's a way where we can implement or promote these modules, maybe through, you know, different, um, events or, you know, certificates, different things on campus. I think there's a lot of possibilities where this could be used. And I think that's all I have. So thanks. Okay, great. So I think we will now hear from Mark at Queens. And Mark, take it away. Great. Um, so my answer to the first question on how uh, we are implementing the course at our institution is that um, we're experimenting the use of a tool called Articulate Rise, and we're going to be using it in combination with a Brightspace course for the implementation of the modules. Now, we're nowhere near as, as ready as Christina is at Regina in that we're just starting the implementation process um, and we're hoping for a launch around summertime. But what we found with Articulate Rise is that it's a simple tool, it makes it incredibly easy to build responsive course content, and it works really well for a self-directed course and allows for the easy integration of quizzes and videos. So I tried a little video here to show how it might look. Um, so if you can just press play. Um, this is what the intro page might look like. It allows, for, um, it allows you to navigate down to see all of the modules, and then you can just press start to get to the first part of the course. So for each module, I've put a section with the video and the video will play. And the video like the original course includes captions and will also include a downloadable transcript. And then for each module, I plan on creating an section that includes information about the copyright services and policies in place at Queens for instructors. And so for each module, that content will relate to the content in the video. And then instructors will be prompted to test their knowledge in a quiz um, that they will complete and rise and will be tracked in Brightspace. So we do plan on tracking quiz completion. And I also plan on adding a section with further readings and resources, including links out to relevant opening up copyright modules at the U of A. So you can see how the quizzes come up here too. So all of the quiz questions will be um, available through Articulate Rise. And you can see that I recorded the video as if the individual was taking the course on a tablet. I selected tablet because it fit really well with the, um, you know, the PowerPoint presentation. Um, but you can, the great benefit of Articulate Rise is that it responds equally as well as if you're in a browser or in a cell phone as the video shows. So next slide. So how does this fit with our institutional practices? Uh, so this, the, the, the implementation of this course is part of a general rethink of the copyright services that we're offering at Queens. And this work has been guided by an internal audit that was completed in 2019. Uh, and one of the findings in that internal audit um, is that the auditors actually did a number of interviews with educators at Queens. And they found that many educators were knowledgeable about the requirements, uh, the copyright requirements at Queens and are capable of ensuring their course content is compliant. But they also found others that may lack the understanding, time, or awareness to ensure compliance. Um, furthermore, some faculty members were not aware of our electronic reserve system and its purpose and, ro and role in ensuring copyright compliance. So at Queens, we do have a very well used electronic reserve service. Um, and a lot of people are using it, but there are others that are not using it as much as we would like. 
So other elements of this um, revamp will include the formation of a new copyright advisory group. And this group will be under the provost office. We had one a number of years ago, but it, it, it's been fairly dormant for the last couple of years. So this is gonna be a new group. And the first um, thing that that new group is going to be doing is that we'll be reviewing our fair dealing policy and potentially changing in, in, uh, the, the content of our fair dealing policy. And another thing that we'll be doing is um, we're forming another working group that's going to guide the selection and implementation of a new electronic reserve system to replace ARIES, which has served us well for almost 10 years. We have a ton of courses in it, um, but it is getting a little bit long in the tooth. So we, we, we are going to be looking at a few other platforms. So next slide, please. So um, in relation to whether or not we're considering any incentives for instructors and the staff that to complete the course and whether or not, it, if it will be mandatory or not, there are a number of places that we want to make the course available. The first being our human resources course catalog. So through our human resources department, there's a catalog of training that is available to staff and faculty. Um, you know, it includes both self-directed courses and courses that you can register for and you have to attend. So this seems like a logical place to put this course once it's completed. And we also hope to include it as part of the mandatory trainings that, that both new faculty um, and staff have to complete that helps orient them to teaching and working at Queens and also the training for the teaching fellows as well. And the plan is to start off with the course being voluntary, but we do hope that it may become mandatory in the future. And we've also been talking about the possibility of micro credentials at Queens generally, both for students and for faculty. So we were thinking that this course might be a great small micro credential that faculty could own, that they could get a badge for or something that they could add to their um, teaching dossier or their um, CV or just have some other um, kind of um, incentive tied to getting that micro credential. And as for how we will promote the course, um, for I've already started, like Christine, I've already started promoting it a little bit. Um, so I've been including reference to the course in all of my teaching and promotional materials. And I've also rebranded all of my presentations and a lot of my promotional materials to include the fantastic images that, are, that, that, that make the videos so great. And I'm also planning significant outreach over the summer when the course launches, including um, visits to departmental meetings again, and hopefully collaboration with our liaison and subject librarians. Yeah, next slide. So that's my piece and I'll hand it over to Rowena to talk about the University of Calgary. All right, so like Mark, um, we also, our learning management system is D2L or Brightspace. And I am also um, working towards um, implementing the course there. What we're doing um, is uh, a facilitated, the course that I've set up, it's in tests right now, so I'm not as far as Christina either, um, but it's fun to play with it. So I've set it up so that uh, the course facilitates self-enrollment by all you Calgary faculty, staff, and students. And I've also set it up so that the course administrator can register specific groups. And I'll talk a little bit more about why I'm going with that level of flexibility. Uh, I'm also creating a brief enrollment form. And this is primarily because the integration between um, our learning management system and PeopleSoft, which is our CMS, it, it won't identify, say, the difference between a staff member and an instructor. So our intention is we'd like to know by staff kind of group how many people are completing, but it will be kind of just very basic stat collection. Uh, we're storing the videos in Yuja, but I've embedded them into the D2L course modules. And I've done that more for appearance preference um, than anything. It is also possible just to link directly from our, the D2L course um, to the videos, but I like having it embedded so that it pops up immediately for the user. And I've created the quizzes directly in using the D2L functionality. Um, and then like Mark and Christina have mentioned, um, you know, I'm integrating all of the UCalgary specific information into those each module. So we have our copyright policy, we have our fair dealing guidelines, and a lot of our institutionally specific information will also be incorporated um, into the course. 
I will say that it's been very easy to set the course up. Um, it's been really easy. D2L Brightspace offers kind of the functionality I'm looking for, um, but I am curious to kind of see what Mark does with Articulate Rise uh, because I think it adds a bit more to that user experience. So I think I'm going to be investigating kind of how to add more color and make kind of my course in D2L more kind of visually engaging than it might be in its current um, current version. Uh, so it's a work in progress. Uh, next slide, please. So then in terms of uh, how the implementation fits with our institutional policies, um, this, the implementation of the course is endorsed by our campus copyright committee, which is chaired by the provost and vice provost academic at our institution. Um, so this is always very helpful when you kind of have that engagement um, and that big committee to help you um, implement and then endorse everyone participating and taking the course. Um, it's also viewed as one of our, a critical piece of our campus copyright programming and risk mitigation tools. Um, and it really, what we've always had the goal to ensure that we're offering copyright training and education. And this just helps significantly with getting us there because then it's not just relying on me trying to get out to the entire community. Um, so we're quite excited about um, that aspect of it. Um, what we're looking at right at the onset as soon as I get this launched is it will be one of our recommended instructor copyright activities. So right now um, instructors are encouraged to use our copyright course material review um, program and then they will also be encouraged to complete the course. Uh, so that's kind of our starting spot with that. Um, and then I'm actually also hoping to expand on this. So similar to what Mark said, you know, you kind of have your initial implementation, um, but then I would really like to expand it to, you know, instructors and staff being asked to kind of refresh the course annually to remind themselves of their responsibilities. Um, and then I would like similarly like to roll this out as one of our teaching assistants. Um, they have, we have quite a robust training for our teaching assistants and there's certificates that they're granted as part of their training program. And I'd love to get this included as one of the components of our teaching assistant training. And I would also like to um, include it in onboarding activities for staff and instructors. Uh, I currently participate in our new academic orientation, um, but it would not be really great if this was one of the, you know, components that went out to them before I meet with them in person um, because I think it would then allow us to speak. Uh, my presentation could speak very specifically to what we do at the University of Calgary and then also what resources and gui um, guidance we provide specific to our institution and they'd already have this really nice background information on copyright. Um, so that's kind of where I'm hoping to head with that. Um, and then as I briefly mentioned, um, we would like to gather very general uh, statistics in terms of, you know, which staff unit is completing it, how many people per year are completing it, because I do think this will help um, inform where we go and how we um, promote this course moving forward on our campus. And that is also one of the reasons why I wanted to do the brief enrollment form is just so that we can gather the information that we need. Um, and we would also need to self enroll groups of students if I am able to roll it out as a TA certificate program because we would need to probably issue some certification of completion. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so then in terms of promotion, um, you know, I have all sorts of ideas. So right off the bat, um, what I'm looking at is kind of a soft launch for spring summer um, and engage some particular people. Um, maybe particular identify particular staff groups, maybe I could get the library staff on board to give it a whirl and check it out. Um, I'm looking at maybe engaging some of our graduate students uh, to get some initial feedback on what I've created, and then kind of more full blow and promotion for the fall if everything goes um, as I hope it does. So that would include um, a communication plan actually from the copyright committee um, and it would include reference to the course and completing the course would be included in our all staff copyright reminder that goes out. Um, and then also in our biannual instructor copyright reminder emails. So they are 
sent an email from the Copyright Committee and from the Provost twice a year, um, reminding them of all of our copyright services and their responsibilities in this area. And I think we would stick in a line there to, um, you know, here's the course, please complete. Uh, so that would be a great promotional um, activity. And then obviously social media campaign, and we have a campus newsletter, You Today, that I would I would hope maybe we could write a story for just to promote it, um, as particularly as we go into the fall semester and everybody's being reminded of um, their copyright responsibilities and all the other things we have to think of for fall. Um, in addition to that, one of the things um, that I'm also looking at is, is obviously linking to the course itself from copyright web pages and from other web pages. Um, and then from within our D2L course shells, um, like Christina said, we have links to kind of copyright information, but I'd like to maybe um, integrate directly links to the self-enrolled course there as well. And in our, um, we have a, um, an end user license for D2L that references copyright. So that would be another great place to be able to link directly uh, to the self-enrolled course. Um, and then beyond that, I'm really looking at partnering with kind of campus allies and colleagues to promote the course and to potentially integrate individual models um, or the entire course into their resources and training. Um, so I'm, and I think some of them might be even in this session, but our digital initiatives and scholarly communications librarian, our manager digitization repository services, um, you know, the open licensing module and the author rights module, I think, could be probably very helpful for them. I don't know how many of you get um, continually explain Creative Commons licensing to people, but I think perhaps this could be very valuable to other people um, within our community. Um, and then I'm also looking at partnering with the Faculty of Graduate Studies and our teaching and learning institution, as well as, again, as I mentioned, the teaching assistant training programs just to really get as broad a reach as possible and work with them on how they think we can really um, make this a, an effective tool on our campus. Um, and I think that's it. Thanks. Thanks, Rowena. Okay, so you're back to me now. So I'm going to um, discuss what our plans are at uh, U of T. Um, so we've opted to go with a standalone course approach in Canvas. Um, and one of the major reasons for that is um, we've got a number of professional development and other learning opportunities outside of traditional scheduled courses um, already offered on this platform. So the community in general is, I think, familiar with this space um, and and going to Canvas, which is branded as Quirkus at U of T um, for professional development opportunities. Um, we also really wanted to use this as an opportunity to customize the content for a U of T context. Um, and when I say that we have done customization, I wanna emphasize that that customization at this point is very light. Um, so transcripts, videos, quizzes have not been altered. Um, we're using them totally as is. However, we have added notes within the text that provide um, some context and point to U of T specific resources and support. Um, so I just wanted to give the group uh, a closer look at some of the customization that we've done at this point. Um, so an example um, that you see on your screen right now is um, we indicate that um, you, you can't see it, but the, the transcript is below. Um, and we do indicate that there is maybe some specific to U of T notes within that transcript. Um, and we also um, encourage them, the user to visit uh, the resource center that we have created uh, for more U of T specific information. And I will give everyone a closer look at that in just a minute. Um, so on this slide, you will see an example of uh, a note within the transcript. Um, so I think there are maybe 
three to four instances max right now in the whole course where a note has been added to the transcript. So it's not a frequent occurrence. Um, we tried to make it pop so that it does pop out to the user that like this is this is something different that they're seeing. Um, and we only did this in cases where we felt that there was critical information that needed to be shared um, about the U of T context. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, um, another small addition that we made, and you have heard all of um, our colleagues already talk about how, um, you know, building resource centers is something that everybody has plans to do or has completed already. Um, we've got a resource center uh, within the uh, within the course um, where we break down um, library support and services available. Um, all of the copyright resources that we have um, that are static web tools. Um, and we've added other resources like um, breaking down all the options that uh, an instructor has to make their readings available. Um, and then anything that we've also created over the course of um, our move to remote learning uh, during the pandemic, we've also um, added these helpful resources. So this is, I hope this will just be a, a space that grows um, over time as we um, invest um, more of our staff time into building this resource up so that it can be, I mean, I don't think it's, it's actually going to be a one-stop shop. Um, it never is, but um, at least a, a comprehensive, as comprehensive as possible um, so that we can point instructors to uh, and faculty and stu students to all of the things that are available to them. Okay, so to give you a little bit of background on our approach, the goal of our implementation um, is to have the widest reach possible. So um, it, it is a priority for us to remove as many barriers as we can to have um, people participate um, or take up um, either some or all of the modules. Um, the goal is to create a public course um, that does not require registration. Um, again, that's just something that we potentially saw as a barrier for people actually um, taking, um, taking up some of the modules, but that might change in time. Um, we're not planning on tracking whether users are completing the course. Um, we're approaching this as a voluntary self-serve model for the University of Toronto community. Um, and my hope is that if a user doesn't finish the course from start to finish on their first go, um, perhaps they'll come back and watch a module that they have seen that is particularly um, interesting to them or, or that they need at, at that point in time. So for example, if you know they're struggling with licensing or author rights or OER or something like that, um, uh, that is available to them and um, we can point them to that as well. Um, it, this type of approach, I think, is um, because our campus is so large, um, it, this is an important part of our copyright compliance strategy is just making it possible for um, as many people as we can to, um, to uh, get on board with some of this, um, some of this information, especially because we also have limited bodies that are able to visit departmental meetings and provide sessions. Um, so this allows us to cover much more ground. Um, another decision that we made was to not track quiz results. Uh, rather than create individual quizzes in Canvas, um, we simply copied the Carl quizzes straight into the course. So this means we aren't retaining any of the quiz results. Um, again, that's something that we might change over time, uh, but for the initial launch, which has not happened yet, um, this is the, um, the intro plan at least. 
So we're in very early stages of discussion of how we're going to communicate this more broadly. Uh, but typically when we're doing copyright education on our campus, we take a mixed approach. Um, we do a lot of high level communication um, via newsletters or uh, memos that can go out to a much larger audience. Um, and then we hope to work with our liaison librarian structure um, and some of the partnerships that we have with other departments on campus for more targeted outreach over time. So um, I imagine that this will really pick up um, in the summer, um, some of this more targeted outreach, but um, I think wider communication um, is planned as soon as, as we feel like the course is in a, in a space. We have to do a little bit of tweaking in terms of um, how we share the course out, but otherwise it's almost ready to go. Um, I do really see huge potential for this course to be used um, as a training and onboarding tool, as we've already heard some of our other panelists speak about, um, particularly I think for library staff, um, for those that are working in resource sharing. And um, if you offer e-reserve services, I think that this is like an excellent um, training tool for that group of users, especially since those services are in such demand right now. Um, and we'll be looking for opportunities to integrate this into faculty onboarding and new instructor onboarding where we find those avenues. So it's definitely a work in progress. Um, the approach might change over time, as I've said, um, but we're really excited about the opportunity that these modules present to our community of users. Okay, so that's all that I have. Um, I believe we have a poll, but I don't know if we want to take questions first. I will look to... Um, I say before we move to the questions, let's, uh, let's launch the poll and um, just get uh, a feel from the, uh, from the audience about uh, where, where you think you are at this point in time with um, implementing or not uh, this course on campus. And if while you're waiting, you have any questions for us, um, feel free to put your hand up or put them in the Q&A as well, and we'll answer them. Or also the chat, we'll monitor the chat too. Okay, well, I think we have received all of the responses we're going to. So I'm just going to share the results of where our participants are. So it's nice to see we have 14 people that are, are working on it now, 29 that uh, plan to, and uh, we'll be getting started soon. And uh, for those who have indicated that you want to, um, but would like a little bit of help, uh, maybe you can contact us at info at carl-abrc.ca. Uh, and uh, that way we can reach out to you to see if there's something that, um, that we can do to help you get started. So we do have one question in the chat um, for Stephanie. Uh, Roger asked if adding the note in the transcript is something you have to do in H5P. And uh, Olga also asked when you are planning to launch. So two questions for you. Sorry, I was muted. Um, so I had a really excellent graduate student, Will, 
in our office help me with this. So I, I'm not sure um, if I'm gonna be able to give you the kind of answer you want for your transcript question, but essentially all we did was copy and paste the text um, into uh, uh, Canvas, which is very simple, and then just added small notes. So, um, and again, as I mentioned, it only happened a few times. So um, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure I'm providing you the answer that you actually want here, <laughs> but good. Okay, so I see that you say that that makes sense. Excellent. Um, in terms of when we're planning to launch, uh, probably relatively soon. Um, so as soon as we do a little bit of, um, I think, internal discussion about communication plans and just figuring out um, some of the nitty gritty in terms of like uh, making a public course in Canvas and some of those other pieces um, will launch as broadly as possible. Um, the first step though uh, that we haven't done yet is to let the wider um, University of Toronto Libraries community know about um, so letting our staff know that this is available to them and then um, what we like to do uh, when these types of new resources are launched, especially when um, we are asking our liaison librarians um, to add another thing um, to their plate to have to speak to their faculty about is we try to put together a small little package for them that explains the resource um, and who might want to use it. Um, so that's one of the other, one of the uh, maybe more uh, critical steps that has to happen like relatively soon. I didn't, I didn't give you an answer there either. Uh, <laughs> really soon, like in the next few weeks, I'd say. Stephanie, we have another question for you in the Q&A um, and or comment more. I, so Stephanie noted that the content will be updated. How will content updates slash changes be communicated to the community who have implemented it as a standalone course? That's an excellent question. And Mark, I don't know if you have any thoughts right away, but my uh, feeling is that we should probably take this back to our next group meeting. Yeah, I completely agree. So I'm, we still have some funds that we can set aside um, in order to update the modules. And as it's an open course, we do have all of the source files and things um, so that we can make changes as we move forward. So there's that potential. Um, but the actual working group is a limited term group. We're planning on wrapping up the work of that group um, over the next couple of weeks. Um, so one of the things that we will be doing over the next couple of weeks as we wrap up is just creating a plan for how future updates will be managed um, and you know how we'll communicate those things. I'm assuming that we'll communicate them in the same way that we communicate a lot of the things through Carl. So there's a listserv um, of copyright specialists at Carl institutions that will send updates out to. Well, we'd also send any update out to the ABC listserv, for example, and, um, you know, normal other ways of communicating like Twitter and things like that, and probably other um, Carl listservs as well. But um, yeah, we don't have a straightforward answer to that question, but we will have one relatively soon. And so that would also, uh, Karen uh, Keeler here also ask a similar, the, the working group will be working to do the same uh, sort of thing. So the question was as content changes with new legislation cases, et cetera, how will updating work? Uh, and so this is something that the, uh, that the working group is, is planning to address as well to make sure that the information stays relevant. Um, next question, what challenges, if any, have there been to getting the university administrators slash provosts on board? I, I can speak to my experience really quickly and then um, I, I, we can pass it around this question because it's a really good one. Um, so 
for me, there was absolutely no, every, all of the university administrators were very excited to see this course under development. Um, and I think that they were, you know, um, both the provost's office um, and our vice provost of teaching and learning and our other, you know, our legal counsel and our university librarian really want this um, to be rolled out as part of our response to the internal audit and a few other things and to improve compliance. So there really wasn't very much um, that everybody's really happy. And, and, and the other question that, that's in the chat is whether or not we consider making it mandatory or not. Certainly our administration would like to make it mandatory if at all possible, if we can figure out a way to do that. But that's gonna be the job of um, our copyright advisory committee to consider. And, um, you know, working with faculty relations, obviously, because there are some politics there. Um, and I guess I could just add, I mean, I, I certainly have the benefit um, of having our provost on our copyright committee, which certainly helps. But I think in general, um, Everyone who's aware of the course and the potential of it is quite keen, um, particularly because it, it will just help get uh, the broader campus community engaged in directly in education and training. And it doesn't rely on me needing to go out to every department meeting or every faculty meeting. And so um, there's been no resistance and everybody seems quite keen. It will it remains to be seen how much, what we can do in terms of making it mandatory, um, but, um, there's certainly some excitement um, on our campus in terms of where we may be able, where we might be able to go with this. I'll just add that we ha actually haven't had this conversation yet. Um, we don't have um, a copyright committee similar to I think what Rowena and Mark had um, mentioned, uh, but again. Um, the idea of creating um, a course for the University of Toronto um, community has always been something that we've wanted to do as a copyright compliance strategy for the entire institution. So I can't imagine that I'm going to face a lot of barriers in terms of um, in terms of just support for the course. Um, I think the mandatory nature of it at our institution in particular is probably something that um, will, will be a lot more challenging. And I don't know if right now that's just not a conversation that that is on the table at the moment. Um, but I, I imagine that we'll get um, a, a lot of support for the class because it has been a long-standing thing that we have hoped to achieve. Okay, um, <clears throat> excuse me, from Leah, are you considering additional modules in the future? Were there topics that you considered covering but didn't? I was wondering if I could just maybe add something to this. Um, one of the plans, which I forgot to mention, um, that I think we're hoping on doing, which I think addresses your question, is um, the University of Alberta has a series of opening up copyright modules, which actually work really nicely with the CARL copyright modules. So one of the things I think we're planning on doing in the future is trying to figure out um, how to add that content into our modules. They go into a greater breadth of topics. Um, and that really, I think, could enhance the modules. Um, I think the CAR modules are more introductory and the U of A models get more into the specifics. So they have videos on, for example, library exceptions um, that could be very useful to include or different cases that have happened. And I believe to kind of Roger's question, I think you can incorporate some of those videos with H5P. So there's a lot of great, you know, to have those two projects together, I think work really nicely. And that is one of my plans for the future um, about how we can enhance some of this content and um, yeah, maybe even, I guess, customize it a bit more to different uh, different stakeholders, different groups, people mentioned OERs, other things where that could just be expanded upon. And maybe that's why I like, you can mix and match the modules in lots of different ways. 
And, and just to add to that, we do have um, a list of CARL modules and where they match up with the opening of copyright modules and where they complement each other. Um, so that that's available and we're hoping that we can integrate that really well and into, you know, courses being individually implemented and then the, also the CARL course as well. Um, the, the idea of other videos has come up a few other times and that we've been approached by a few people as well to, to look at other topics. Um, early on in the process, uh, Kyle Courtney approached us to ask if we wanted to do a video, for example, a comparatory video between fair dealing and fair use. So that was one idea. So certainly that, you know, this is our first set of modules. Um, another thing that we've discussed is maybe a, a few videos that um address different stakeholder groups at the university so maybe videos that um, relate to students and copyright so the things that they deal with a set of videos like that um but uh that's probably going to be the work of um whatever next working group is working on these kinds of things if, if they're okay We have another question uh, from Danny. Were there additional resources specifically allocated to modifying the course, putting it into the ML LMS, promoting, et cetera, or was this developed at each institution as part of the regular workflow or off the side of the desk special project? I can speak to my experience here. Um, I, I, I wouldn't consider this a on the side of my desk project because I think um, this was something that we flagged as a really, really important part of our overall copyright compliance strategy. So um, uh, I gave it as much time as I could um, in terms of how we implemented it at our institution, um, without the help of a student, I think we would not be as far along as, as we are right now and our, our graduate student who, who helped um, put this together was essential in, in, in getting it into the state and, and getting it to look as nice as it does at the moment. Yeah, I think uh, for us as well, this has been really exciting. Um, I think I've always wanted to do a course like this and actually without this opportunity undertaken by Carl and all of our collective great copyright knowledge, um, this never would have happened. I don't, I don't have the resources at my institution or even the skill and knowledge um, to build all this. So this has been really wonderful um, to be part of this initiative and just I guess, give us this opportunity to have this resource for a community. I love that it's an OER as well. So I think that helps promote things. Um, I think in terms of, um, I guess, making this part of the regular workflow, I think this has also been a good benefit for our library as well, like my, my library, because uh, this was one of the first times um, we got to use H5P. So now I know how to do that and I can share some knowledge with my colleagues. Um, I know Rowena mentioned, I think use Yuja as your server. Well, we now have a Kaltura instance. So I was able to upload videos. So I actually learned a lot about just how the learning management system works. Um, and I got a lot of help from one of my colleagues in the library um, as well, who was very knowledgeable a lot of these processes. Um, so I learned how to upload, you know, um, they taught me how to load SRT files, all these different things, more technical things, which are really, I know they're not really anything to do with copyright, but I think this is knowledge that can also just be shared with other units on campus and you know, maybe other units, like I was inspired by our information security course. Um, and then maybe this course will inspire another unit to want to do something similar. I know a few of you mentioned, I think Mark said they had an HR catalog, new things like that. So I just think this is just a really fun exercise just outside of copyright to participate in this process. And I have uh, one final question here in the Q&A. I think we have answered it, but I'm going to ask it and just ask if um, the person that posed the question, if they're still on the call, uh, if there was something else that you were hoping would be addressed. And the question was, did any of you consider making this a mandatory course at your institution? 
as an important part of any compliance program was this discussed. So we did talk about that a little bit um, uh, from a few perspectives on exploring whether uh, the institution will make it mandatory and the discussions that have been had around that area. Um, if there's, I don't know if there's anything further anyone would like to add to their previous comments. Okay, wonderful. Well, thank you, everyone. We're just approaching the hour. So very impressive that we managed to get all of this in um, within the one hour time. Uh, thank you again to everyone who attended our session today. Merci beaucoup à tout le monde uh, qui ont assisté à notre programme cet après-midi. And I hope that uh, you enjoy the rest of the afternoon and the rest of Fair Dealing Week.